So, when this will be a situation, we will say that the functions, the functions, these two functions are, are ordinal plus normalized. They are orthogonal. Orthogonal means their product gives you zero. And they are normalized. Their magnitude is equal to one. So these two terms I can combine and I can say ortho from here and normal from here. Orthonormal wave functions. And the fourth property of these wave function is that they are they are complete. They are complete. What is meant by complete? Complete means that any function, any function can be expanded, can be expanded and is a linear, is a linear combination of these functions. Any function can be expanded as a linear combination of these wave functions. And we call such functions the basis wave functions. Basis. I will explain this one at the end of this lecture probably uh, because we will relate this one to the vector space. So one we are having a space for a function and the other we are having a space for a vector. So I will explain this one uh, as well but at the end of this lecture. So they are complete. Now, what is meant by this? If we are having any function f of x, then this function, I can write summation from n equals 1 to infinity and cn sine n of x. This psi n is actually this one while cn is the coefficient of it and then it will give this is a result of it clear so it is the expansion of this function into these terms and these terms are these are the bases with which on which you are expanding this one and this one is the coefficient of it so I can write that this one psi n is 2 over a and then summation on n from 1 to infinity c n sine n pi x over a. You can write it like this. And then the question will be that if we get the value of CNs, then we will write this function in this form. It is like a Taylor expansion, Taylor series. So we can write it like this. Now how we will determine this CN? 
how we will determine this CN. So this CN can be determined. Let's say this is equation 1. Multiplying equation 1 by sine m conjugate of x. So what it will become? It will become sine m conjugate of x f of x and then on this side it will become equal to this is summation on m from 1 to infinity and c psi m conjugate of x c n and psi m of x. If I integrate both sides then this will be integrated and this will be integrated so I can write that this one now I am not writing a function of x but just directly I can write that sine m conjugate f of x is equal so it will become dx here and similarly dx here as well dx is equal if I write this summation outside no problem with this one and then integral and is cn here cn I can take out right ok cn I can write out here so when cn because cn is not taking any part in the integration but cn's are actually dependent on the summation only like it will be c0, c1, c2 and so on it is a constant so I can write psi m star of x and psi m of x dx and now you can write that what this thing is equal to summation on m from 1 to infinity cn and this one you can write delta m from this condition from here so if m will be equal to n for m equals n then this will be equal to 1 because when m is equal to n then this is equal to 1 so I can write that this will be equal to summation and c m for example if m is equal to n then m is equal to n so this will become c m and what about this summation it is n running from 1 up to infinity but we will not count the value equal to m because earlier we have counted this value so m will not be equal to m here so I can write that cn is equal to means this will be cm for all values for all values of this when n will be equal to n so with one value it will give some value here while all other values will be equal to 0 because they will not be m equal to n so I can write that there is no need of summation to write the summation but this will be equal to c m so I can write this c m will be equal to sine m of x conjugate and here f of x dx this will give me the value of c m and from minus infinity to plus infinity and we can have that 
all means we will find all the CMs are CMs. Means the summation, the summation on all CMs mod square will be always equal to 1. Because all coefficients will sum up to 1. So these are the properties of the wave function that we got for our infinite potential wave. Okay, thank you. So in order to understand that this sign f of x is equal to 2 over a and sine n pi of x over a such that n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on and en is equal to n square pi square h bar square over 2 m a square and here n is also the same. Now, as you remember, I call them the bases, which is the plural of bases. And now I will explain you the difference, the difference between the difference between vector space vector space and Hilbert space so first let's talk about the vector space You know about a vector space that it is a three dimensional space. We are having x, we are having y, and we are having z. Three dimensional space. This x and y and z we call the unit vectors. Unit vectors are what? These are unit vectors. Now, you know some properties of a unit vector. What are those properties? The properties are that if you take the magnitude of this or this or this, then they will be equal to 1. And if you take the dot product of any of them with each other, then they will be equal to zero. Why? Because they are perpendicular to each other. This condition tells me that they are orthogonal to each other. And this condition tells me that these unit vectors are normalized. Their magnitude is equal to 1. So I call these unit vectors that these unit vectors are actually according to our new definition, they are orthonormal. These unit vectors are orthonormal in nature. Whenever your unit vectors means every space is having some orthonormal vectors, orthonormal unit vectors. These are orthonormal unit vectors. Now instead of unit vectors I want to give it a new name and that new name I say that they are the bases. Bases are bases of vector space. 
they are basis of vector space now any vector which i define in this space can be resolved in components of these bases like this is a unit vector let's say r and this r is such that it is making this angle theta with the z axis and if i just put its projection on the x y plane then this is the projection vector on this plane and this can go with phi angle means with phi it will go on the base of this room and the vector is like this so it is having some z component some x and y components so i write this r equals to x and z because it is having some x component this one and some y component which is this one so this is the x component and this is the y component so x in x unit vector plus y in y unit vector plus z in z unit vector so what i did i resolved a vector in its individual components the vector was three dimensional and i resolved it in three components here now this x is the magnitude or the coefficient of this r or the portion of this r which is along x the portion which is along y is this y and this one is a long c sometime instead of x y z you write i j k like y in j plus z in k these i j k are orthonormal bases sometime you write them in a different notation like e x y and e y plus z and e z the e x e y e z are the orthonormal bases of the vector space so this is a vector space vector space three dimensional space whenever your bases qualify for this to be orthonormal then you can expand any vector in terms of them right so from here whether i write x or i or p e, x they are just unit vectors they are the orthonormal bases this thing i call their linear combination right this thing i call their linear combination